All right, so let's uh, get Flume running and play around with it. I've already started up my virtual box here with the Hortonworks sandbox. So let's go ahead and open up a SSH connection to it. As we've done a million times before. All right, so all you really need to do to get Flume running is write a configuration file that defines what sources, channels, and sinks are associated with each agent that you want in your Flume setup. So you can have a single configuration file that pretty much does it all. All Flume setup really is, is setting up these configuration files. So let's download a simple one. This actually came straight from the Flume website. It's their simplest example to get started with, but I have a copy of it for you here. Just type in wget media.sundog-soft.com slash hadoop slash example.conf. And let's take a look at what's in it. Let's example.conf. Okay, so here's the contents of a actual Flume configuration file, and we'll see how we use it shortly. So it works like this. Basically, you start off by saying, what are the names that I'm going to associate with my sources, my sinks, and my channels? And this is a very simple example where we only have a very simple flow in Flume that has a single source, a single sink, and a single channel. So to recap, like we talked about in the previous lecture, the first thing we're going to do is set up a source that just listens to Telnet through Netcat. It will go through a memory channel and output that just to a log through a logger sync. Okay. Now, sort of the convention here for some reason is, you know, we call agents A and we call sources R and sinks K because you can't call them both S and channel C. You can really call them whatever you want, though. If you want to use something more descriptive, you know, I definitely encourage you to do so. So all we're saying so far, agent one, A1, which is going to be named A1, just arbitrary name, its sources will consist of R1, its sinks will consist of K1, and its channels consist of C1. So we define what those mean down here. So let's start off by fleshing out what the sources mean. So agent one's A1 sources R1, so the R1 source attached to A1 is of a netcat type. Netcat is just a utility in Unix that can listen to an arbitrary port for traffic on TCP, like from Telnet. We are going to bind it to the local host, so that means we're going to listen on local host on port 44444. So that's all we need to do to set up the source in Flume to actually listen to a network connection on the local host on this port. That's it. It's that easy. Next, we're going to describe our sync, which is just going to be a logger type. So all that's going to do is write information into the log from Flume and nothing else. So we can just watch that scroll by. Not a very useful or a practical sync, but it's enough to show us that it's actually doing something and working. Next, we'll set up the channel, which we'll say is a memory type. So a1.channels.c1.type, that refers to the C1 channel associated with A1. The only real choices here are memory and file. Since we don't care about persistence, we'll just go with memory. And a lot of these different you know, sources and sinks and channels have different types of optional configuration you can set up. You don't have to actually set up a capacity and a transaction capacity setting, but you can if you want to. And if you go through the Flume documentation, you can see extensive documentation on what all these options actually mean and when you might need to use them. Finally, we will bind the source and the sync to that channel. So we just say A1 sources R1. So our R1 netcat source that we set up up here is going to be attached to the C1 channel. And note that it says channels. You can actually associate a source with more than one. But a sync can only have one channel, and we're going to associate that with that same C1 channel. So through this configuration file, you might want to pause and kind of like let this sync in, make sure you understand it. All we're doing is setting up a netcat source, a logger sync, a memory channel that connects the two. So we're setting up a flow that starts with a netcat source, goes through a memory channel, and finally ends up in a logger sync. Okay, got it? So let's actually use it. Cool. So let's open up a new terminal and we'll actually run Flume from that. So I'm going to right click here on putty, open up a new HTTP session, Maria underscore dev. And let's move this side by side to our other session here. So let's actually start up Flume with that configuration. So Flume lives in the same place all the other pre-installed Hadoop stuff lives under slash USR slash HTTP slash current slash flume server. And from here, we can kick off flume itself. So we can launch a new flume agent just by doing this. bin slash flume dash ng agent, meaning we want to start an agent using the conf configuration folder, which just is some general purpose flume stuff we haven't really talked about. But for our purposes, it can, we can stick with the defaults. 
We will then specify the path to our configuration file that we just looked at. So dash dash conf dash file, and that lives in my home directory, which is represented by the tilde character slash example dot conf. And finally, we need to tell it which agent in that configuration file do we actually want to run. So dash dash name a1. If you recall, a1 was the name of the agent that we set up. So you can actually have a configuration file that has more than one agent defined and use that same configuration file on different servers, but actually launch different agents on different servers. So that way you don't have to keep track of a bunch of different configuration files, which is kind of nice. Finally, we want, we want to see all these messages flowing through. So we're going to say dash d flume.root.logger equals info console, like that. So that means that we're going to look at every single logger message that comes through, even if it's informational in nature, and we're going to print it out to the console. So let's go ahead and kick that off. So at this point, Flume is spinning up with our A1 agent that's defining a flow of netcat to a memory channel to a logger. And the logger output is just going to write into this log. So let's see if it works. Let's actually connect to it. We'll go back to this other window over here and we'll do a telnet localhost 44444. If you recall, those are the that's the host and port that we set up our agent to listen on through netcat. And we can just start typing stuff and it should show up in our logger uh, over here on the right. So let's say, uh, hello there, how are you today? And sure enough, there it popped up. So over here in our, our logger sync, I'll put the following log message. There's the actual bytes of the message itself, which is hello there, how, so on and so forth. So it truncated the actual message, but um, pretty cool. So let's type something else. Um, I don't know, four, uh, how do you say four score? Four score and seven years ago. Let's see if that comes through too. Yep, cool enough, cool. So you can see it's actually working. I am, my source in Flume is listening to the data coming in through this Telnet connection to port 44444, putting it through the memory channel and outputting it just to the log of this log itself. So there you have it, Flume is actually working. We can just control C, uh, actually control right bracket to get out of that and type in quit to get out of Telnet. And we're done with that. Over here, we can hit control C to stop the Flume agent. And with that, we can go on to a more interesting example in our next lecture.